Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News in Shinrin Yoku. And tonight, we're bringing you an update on the Iceland volcanic situation. Could volcanic period be ahead? Well, yes, indeed. Thousands of tremors have been kicking off on the Reykjanes Peninsula for weeks. And the USGS is showing zero quakes. What's going on? Well, what's actually going on is there are hundreds of quakes per day on the Reykjanes Ridge. Thousands over the last week. The activity has calmed down, but in the last 24 hours, there have been dozens of quakes above 2.5 magnitude, not a single one showing on the USGS map. Now, that's not information. That's disinformation. That's not science. That's nonsense. Now let's talk about the actual science, not the nonsense. Could a volcanic period be ahead? Well, the volcanic systems on the Reykjanes Peninsula you're looking at here are shown in pink. The red lines indicate the tectonic plate boundaries where earthquakes are common. Geothermal areas are marked in yellow and black lines indicate fissure swarms. So now that we have you up to speed, Let's talk about the facts of the situation, and they're very bleak. If an eruption occurs, it would likely mark the beginning of such a volcanic period that lasts centuries. And this is according to Magnus A. Sjögensen, a geologist at ISOR, Iceland Geosurvey, a consulting and research institute in the field of geothermal sciences and utilization. That's at least how it has been in the past three times, according to Sjögensen. And even dating further back, but we don't have as exact data available on that, he tells MLSIS. He is referring to the uncertainty regarding whether an eruption can be expected soon on the Reykjanes Peninsula, Southwest Island. Magnus assembled data on the past three volcanic periods in the area. These were 3,000 to 3,500 years ago, 1,900 to 2,400 years ago, and finally, the most recent, between the years 1800 and, 20, and 1240 AD. Interestingly enough, that was during the boon uh, of the Pueblo Indians over here in the US, which, and the ash might have caused extensive rainfall to allow them to live in this desert environment. That's my opinion. Now, Magnus's information is based on geologic maps of the Reykjanes Peninsula and on a comprehensive book on volcanic eruptions in Iceland called Naturuva a Islindi, Ilogos da Jarkostalfor. Research reveals that during the later part of the Holocene, a term used to describe a period that began about 11,700 years ago, the volcanic systems on the Reykjanes Peninsula have erupted every 900 to 1,100 years, respectively. On cue, less is known about the first part of the Holocene, but it's the more recent time that we have high resolution for. Now, each eruption period appears to have lasted 500 years. Not like the recent eruptions from the larger volcanoes uh, a little east of here, which only erupt for a few days or weeks. The Reykjanes Ridge is something much different. Now, albeit generally not simultaneously, the volcanic activity is characterized by eruptions that each last a few decades one after the other, Reykjanes, Svartengai, Krushevik, Fagradesval, Brenstenfall, and back, and so on and so forth. It's a, a recurring theme. On the Reykjanes Peninsula, there are six volcanic systems. One, two, three, four, five, six. And these appear to be, have been active in concert with each other. So they add insult to injury, they fuel each other, and they work on each other's volcanic systems beneath. The last volcanic period began around the year 800 in Brendintjall. And you can see that here clearly on the map here in this pink stripe, Brendsteinfall. And on the Reykjanes Peninsula, there are six systems lined up side by side pointing from the southwest to the northeast. Farthest west is the Reykjanes. So we'll just go over these. Then the Svartsengi, then the Fagradjesfall, then the Kreishuvik, 
then the Brent Steinfall, then the Hengel. Now, during the 10th century, the Brendenschfall erupted, creating at least five different lava fields. This was followed by a 150-year-long break in volcanic activity. Then, most likely in 1151, an eruption began in Kreischewick volcanic system, just to the west. According to written sources, it ended in 1181, about 35 years later. Three lava fields resulted. What followed was a 20-year break in activity. Finally, in 2010, an eruption began near the ocean, a short distance from Vyakina Peak on the Rekianus Point. Here. It lasted until 1240, marking the end of 450 years of volcanic activity, which did include long breaks from eruptions in between of decades. But that doesn't bode well for what's happening on the island. In fact, here is the evidence of the lava spreads for those events. Now, what we can glean from this is that they're not major events, but they do encompass square miles of lava extrusion. And I can tell you that any single one of these, if we just look at the most recent here, the yellow, and add it to the one right before that in the orange, if this much lava were to pour out just south of Reykjavik, it would toxify the groundwater and the air forever, making it almost impossible to live a ha healthy and happy life in this region. Volgar, Kelir, and many other cities are at risk. Not a lot of people in those regions like Keflavik and other areas, but there are 150,000 people up here in Reykjavik that may need to be relocated because some of the lavas have flowed towards Reykjavik in historic times, including the 1151-1188 AD flow here, moving towards the ocean, and then here towards the other side of the island. This would be cutting off all the roads and all access to all the people over here which is the worry. Now, because this is unprecedented and no one knows what will happen, well, <laughs> it's anyone's guess how bad it will get. Now, the activity has been waning for days, but that doesn't mean it's over. It's still a very high seismic active front, and the lava has now moved up to one kilometers from the surface. And we'll just bring you through the last two Earth uh, updates and here's yesterday's update at 022 UTC yesterday to 042. A harmonic tremor was detected at Fragrisval volcano. While this harmonic tremor only lasted 20 minutes, it was a tremor nonetheless. And this is when this huge density of quakes happened. And this is all tremor here. This is all tremor here. And then the tremor seems to end right here at the first stripe of the yellow. Tremor means there's so many earthquakes laying over each other that it just becomes a buzz. And that's what we see here. This is less of that density moving forward, so there's no more tremor. And we would expect when the eruption begins, the tremor will start again. So the tremor has stopped now for a day, and this is indicative of what happens before the eruption. So that's what's happening on the 7th. Our newest update just coming out moments ago. New measurements of the situation at Fadels. Fagradersval volcano show that the dike intrusion continues to grow as at its shallowest point at one kilometer below the surface. So there's now lava just less than one kilometer below the surface, which means any day now it will come up above the surface. Possible eruption is expected at the south end of the dike intrusion closest to Fagradersval mountain. Earthquakes are going to happen at the southwest end of the dike and the northeast end of the dike because of the inflation the magma is creating in the area. And this is pretty scary because that means that there is still a risk. There's going to be quiet times between high periods of activity according to the news about this activity. But there's also ongoing risk of an earthquake with magnitude 6.5, which could be dangerous in the area of Reykjavik. And this is in Brinsteinfjall volcano. And according to Iceland Met Office, that risk has not been reduced in recent days. Outside the Fad Fadradosval volcano, magma dike, no magma movement has been seen in Reykjanes or Kreischevik. 
So that's good news. So Fagradishval is the area here in question that's in the dotted. That's where the uh, lava will start to flow. That little volcanic, uh, the pointy mountain you see is right here. And so we're keeping a close eye on this region as it is going to eventually, the magma will come to the surface as lava and we'll re be reporting on an eruption in days from now, in my opinion. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as Iceland is about to erupt, a historic eruption that will last, well, not days, not weeks, but potentially decades or hundreds of years, like it has in the historic past. Share this with like-minded people. Our hearts go out to those in Reykjavik. But the reality is that this is not going to be a deadly eruption for the people in that village. They'll have time to get out. They will be able to get out of harm's way. It will increase tourism if our world opens up. But what it will do is add insult to injury to the weather happening in the northern latitudes of the northern hemisphere around 40 to 50 degrees latitude, where recently we saw some of the ash from Etna make its way over to Lake Michigan. We're going to see the same thing with this ash and gas moving around the globe for hundreds of years. Are you ready? We're steady. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when we're entering a volcanic error, an earthquake error, a new paradigm, the magnetic reversal, and the grand solar minimum. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. And be safe. Dun, dun, dun.